for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Hi, and welcome to our series of uh, video tutorials on working with table-based layouts inside of Dreamweaver CS5. In our last video, we saw how to make a basic layout inside of uh, Dreamweaver using tables. And this example, we're going to see a little bit more complex example where we combine a fluid layout table with a static uh, table so that we have the benefits of having part of the design elements go all the way across the page where others are constrained into just the real viewable area of the web page. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come here to the file menu and select new and I'm going to go ahead and create a new page and it's going to be an HTML5 page and I'll go ahead and click create and there I go. Now, in order to have a design element go from side to side, we're going to need to go ahead and set the page properties. Now, normally I would do this in an external CSS style sheet. But since we're not working with CSS right now, I'm going to just going to go ahead and use the page properties dialog box here. And I'm going to go ahead and set the left margin, the right margin, the top, and the bottom margins all to zero. That way my table can go all the way up against the edge. Now in our example, I'm going to want a header row up the top, and then I'm going to want a row for my banner area. I'm going to want a row below that for a top navigation, a row below that to hold the content and also some secondary navigation, and then a final row below that for the footer information. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Insert Table, and the table that I'm going to insert is going to have four rows and one column. If I need to insert or delete rows later on, um, I can do that very simply. And I'm going to make sure that I set the table width to 100%. That way it goes all the way across. And I'm also going to make sure that I set the border, padding, and spacing to zero. Because we want the constraining tables that we're going to insert into these areas to go right up against the edge. So I've gone ahead and done that. We don't have any headers because this is a layout table. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And there I go with my sections. Now, I want this top design element to be black and to go all the way across the top. So I'm going to go ahead and select BG here. And I'm going to fill that table cell in with black. And then this second cell is going to be my banner area. Now, I haven't prepared a banner for this uh, class. I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in with a static color. And you can sort of imagine that that's the banner graphic. And then we have a top navigation row here, which I'm going to make slightly, um, uh, I'm going to make it this very dark gray here. And then in our fourth row, that's going to be our content row. I'm going to do something special with that in a little bit, but for right now we're just going to leave it transparent. And I'll hit tab one more time. And now we're going to have the footer row, and I'm going to put that same dark gray into the footer row. So now I have the background table that's going to form the background design element. The next thing I need to do is I need to embed my constraining tables into each one of these sections. And to do that, what I'm going to do is go to Insert Table. And the tables that I'm going to insert into each row is going to be a one by one, just a one by one table. And it's going to be the width that I want to make it. In ca this case, I want the content area to be constrained into an 800 pixel space. And again, I'm going to make sure the border, padding, and spacing are all zero on these items. And I'll click OK. And you'll now see that table has been embedded into that first row. Now I'm going to come down here and change the align property from default to center. And you'll see how that moves that over. I need to duplicate this table in each one of the next four rows so that I can use that to place content inside of. So I'm going to go to the edit menu and select copy. 
And then I'm going to click in my second row and go to Edit, Paste. And you'll see that that table has been now pasted into there. And I'll do that three more times. Paste, Paste, and Paste. And you'll now see, you can see that dotted line there. There's now a single cell table that is constraining each one you know, that will allow us to constrain the content of each one of these areas to just that particular amount of space, the 800 pixels that I chose. And we can kind of see here, I'll just for example hit enter a few times and you can kind of imagine a banner graphic in this blue area here. And you know, again, um, you can imagine you know, this is the navigation area where we have some menu items and then finally a content area and a footer down here at the very bottom. Now this actual content area here, let's say I want the content area itself to have a background color of white, but I want these sidebars here to show up as a very light gray just to sort of set them off a little bit. And you can kind of see if I go into live view here the way this layout is going to look right now. Actually, let me go ahead and add some, um, turn off live view here. And I'm just going to go ahead and type home page here, company home page. And I can click in this area here. link here. Now, that's going to show up wrong. But then you can see you know, this is our content area. Back into live view there. And there we go. And again, just imagine some links there. I imagine some content in here. And you can kind of see how it would be nice to have these sidebar areas a slightly different color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this table. I'm going to do that by right clicking in the middle of it, going to table, and clicking select table. Then I'm going to go to edit and cut. So I've cut that table out. Now I can click in the background area here, and I'm going to set the background color. And again, I'm going to make it just a very light gray. There I go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edit, Paste. I'm going to paste that table back in there. And actually, that's the gray that I put in the background is a little bit too light. So maybe I go to Split here and change that reference to being a little bit darker gray. There we go. And now if I go into Live View, you'll see... Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to change this content area to white. So I'm going to go back into Design View here. That's the reason why I wasn't seeing the contrast. I'll click in that area, click here on the Table property, and change that to white. Now we see the difference. And now I'll go back into Live View, and there we go. And again, you can kind of imagine a banner graphic here and some menu items here. I can enhance this area here a little bit more. I can go back into uh, Design View here and maybe increase the padding on this table. Now, I can't see the table properties because all I have is a cell selected. So what I can do is come here to Table, Select Table. That selects the table. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 20 pixels of padding on that table. And you can see how that's going to move the content away from the edge. So now it's not pushed right up against that. When you look at it in live view, you can see it a little bit better there. And you can imagine that's a heading, so on and so forth. So that's how to create a layout that combines both a fluid background image or background layout with these static table cells that are a fixed width to give you this effect. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, 
please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the uh, website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.